Within the wild world of academic tenure and promotions, how do institutions gauge the value of faculty contributions? Dr. Serena Morgan is a tenure track professor in STEM at your local university. Along with their research and teaching, they've spent the past five years building programs around inclusive curricula and increasing underrepresented students' participation in STEM fields. They have led mentorship initiatives and have advocated for hiring practices that diversify the faculty. These contributions have brought them local and national recognition, as well as access to external funding. But when the time comes for their evaluation review, the committee notices that the number of research papers published and funding brought into the university have been lower compared to their peers. One of the reviewers' comments stood out in particular. While Dr. Morgan has clearly been instrumental in increasing diversity in the department, this work is considered service rather than scholarship and does not align with the high research expectations for tenure. And so with that, Dr. Morgan is passed over for tenure. What do we mean by scholarship? Metrics of scholarly success for career advancement have tended to place emphasis on traditional research, publications, and grant funding. Traditional activities of scholarship are compartmentalized and viewed as separate from the activities of teaching and service. In response to this view, Ernest Boyer, a prolific American educator, put forward a model that expands scholarship into four interconnected components, incorporating activities related to furthering social change and embracing the nuances of scholarly activity. The scholarship of discovery is the closest to the activity of research. That is the advancement of human knowledge through investigation and collection of new information. We ask, what is to be known? What is yet to be found? Integration involves placing research and data into a larger context, creating connections between disciplines and finding new ways of interpreting data and findings. We ask, what do the findings mean? Is it possible to interpret what's been discovered in ways that provide a larger, more comprehensive understanding? In the scholarship of teaching and learning, we ask, how can knowledge best be transmitted to others and best learned? The scholar takes on activities and research designed to improve the teaching and advising of students and develops and publishes materials to use in teaching. The fourth component is application, sometimes called engagement, which involves the use of the scholar's disciplinary expertise to better the institution and society. We ask, how can knowledge be responsibly applied to societal problems? How can it be helpful to people and institutions? All four aspects dynamically interact, forming an interdependent whole that makes up the holistic act of scholarship. Within Boyer's model, contributions that will fall under scholarship now include awards, research and publications, but also community outreach, inclusive teaching curricula, mentorship, policy development, EDI, and advocacy. So what about Dr. Morgan? Well, with this broader definition of scholarship, another review may just be in order. <laughs>